Okay, someone has to say it. Walter Frey did nothing wrong. Not only did he do nothing wrong, but he is one of the biggest chads in all of Westeros. He did nothing wrong. It's he did the right thing. That's the that's the magical part about this. It's not that he did nothing wrong. He actually did the correct thing to do. He did the correct. Oh, see, I, I want to start talking yeah, about it already, but he, I well, let's yeah. first just tease out. Hey, listen, people wanted to see this video. If you're wondering, like, why are the, why are people making this kind of video? Listen, just look at this poll in our community tab and vote on our next video if you don't like what we're talking about here, because you can choose which video we're going to talk about next. So. Hop on over our community tab and vote, and I guarantee you, Craster is going to be our next video. Yeah, yes. Vote, vote. Okay, let's talk about Walder here. Come on, let's go. I got a lot of seeds to inject into this conversation real deep. Where did you want to start with this guy? I first just want to talk about why the phrase are hated so much, because we almost get throughout uh, Westeros history, the phrase are constantly getting shit on by everybody around them. Like, so the phrase are supposed to be like kind of new money, right? They've only been around for 600 years, but they're still considered a new house. Yeah, they're not an ancient house. Yeah, they're not an ancient house. I know. That, isn't that kind of ridiculous? Like, oh, we've only been around for 600 years, but it's like you've been here longer than the Targaryens, and the Targaryens claim to fame is that they just had dragons and no one Well, that's them. the whole thing of Targaryens. Though. We, don't, we don't need to make this Targaryen hate video, but right. we know how that is. Like, dude, throughout history, like the... The Sept and like the religion of the Seven, dude, they hated the Targaryens at first, and they knew there's nothing they, they could have done against the the dragons. Like they had to comply, like with the incest and everything, right? right. They had to keep making concessions, and so eventually it just became uh, commonplace. But the phrase didn't have anything well, they, in their in their favor. Like, they do nearly that extent. They, you know what they do have? What? They had the land besides Walder. No, they had the land where they could you know capitalize on the crossing. So when they built a bridge, everyone gets pissed off about them. And they're like, oh, why do we have to pay a toll to come across this bridge? Shouldn't it be free? It's like, shut up, dude. <laughs> shut shut up. You know you're gonna pay. A toll. Will, well, you have to pay a toll to take a yeah. ferry to take a ship anywhere. Pay the toll, and then you get mad at me because yeah, I'm making the money. Toll. Yeah, pay the troll toll, dude. Absolutely, it, it's completely ridiculous. And I, you know, I need to, some explanation here, though. Let us know in the comments why exactly is the the twins is the crossing such a vital point? If you look at the map of Westeros, maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I'm a stupid idiot, piece of shit. But it doesn't look to me. Like, this is the only place you could cross. Maybe it's the only place with a road wide enough to accommodate an army. I, I don't well, know. I don't understand. Th there is that, but the, the King's Road is on the eastern side, which if Rob was trying to go down, why didn't he just... I, I, I still need to look back. I know, this, this is what I'm like, talking about. Why didn't go down the King's Road? It's like, no, I got to go down this way. It makes sense if you want to go put pressure on the Westerlands and not Jane Westerling. Yeah, don't Western even say Jane Westerling. <laughs> Yeah, don't bring it up. But, don't, but anyways, the, sit boy. The, the whole hatred towards the phrase, they're like, oh, there's these this new money who had a grind set their way to the top by, you know, implementing some tolls at their bridge. And then on top of it, you know, HBO did them dirty because the phrase are Walter Frey. He's like 90 years old. So he's supposed to be kind of like this grosser guy. And he's also supposed to be bald, which, come on, what is up with HBO? Like, you they're know, so scared to do it. No one's bald who's supposed to be bald. Everyone's kind of like half-assing their baldness, and it pisses me off. Oh, it's bald genocide in HBO. It's really pissing me off. You know, I'm going to be bald sooner than later. Sooner mm -hmm. than later, I'm going to have to shave my head. You know, my hair is thinning out, man. I'm going to have to shave it. At the ripe age of 30, I'm going to have to shave my head. I want some representation. I need to see myself on screen, and I'd prefer it be on the face of Walter Frey. <laughs> because he's my boy. You know, he's not the prince. I say this a lot, that the prince that was promised. I don't think he's the prince that was promised. He's not my guy to sit on the throne. Uh -huh. I just think he's kind of a lovable, like, teddy bear figure that a lot of people <laughs> just don't see correctly. I think he is. I think teddy he's got bear. a lot of redeemable qualities. Dude, like you said with the phrase in general, for some reason, he especially is seen as this, like, snaky, untrustworthy guy. Like, we hear from a lot of, like, POV characters and non-POV characters, like uh, Catelyn, Tyrion, like, Cersei, I think even makes a comment about it too yeah but see, i don't understand this is it just because whenever he wants something and it's not always at the crossing but it's just in general he's trying to like get a little bit of coin or at least a little bit of like i'll scratch your back if you scratch mine kind of situation oh yeah how is that weird Did, are you telling me is there some house i'm unaware of in westeros that's just so charitable they'll do anything for anybody with no compensation i don't understand it who 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 Point me in that direction. Yeah, no, like, um, I don't want to spoil anything for House of the Dragon, but when people go to certain houses, they demand something in return. They're not just like, oh, yeah, I bent the knee all those many years ago, and, uh, yeah, that guarantees my loyalty no matter what. And at the same time, in that situation, we're going to get to it a little bit later. I just want to focus on Walter Frey, but, yeah, he's in a kind of predicament. He's going to support a rebellious king to 
you know, the, the current regime, the Baratheon regime right now, and he's going to support the potential Starks. Yeah, it's it's not like like you should definitely just support your king when he's calling you to war. He's always putting these like awkward predicaments, and it's weird that how Tywin is looked at as like this mastermind who played it perfectly, coming into King's Landing and sacking King's Landing. Meanwhile, you know, when Walder Frey shows up late to, uh, you know, the Battle of Triton, I think it was the Battle of Triton when he shows up late. Yeah, he does. That's the one we <laughs> yeah. had. It was already won and he shows up. Yeah. yeah. Like, everyone's like, the late Walder, the late Walder Frey coming in late. It's like, <laughs> dude, no. shut the fuck up. Tywin does the same thing. And also, Howlin' Reed, are we going to call the Howlin' Reed the late Howlin' Reed if Walder Frey is late. What do you call Howlin' Reed for not showing up in the books thus far? He's just a little bitch. He, well, he's more so more so than Walder should be seen. Walder's just not a pushover. That's it. I don't know why. The example you just brought up, the Battle of Trident, why does that even matter? It's, that just sounds, it almost sounds just like schoolyard bullying at that point. For some reason, it's stuck. So maybe that's not even the best example. I know Walder hates it, but that's just because he keeps getting emasculated at every single point in his life. You got to admire the guy's perseverance. That's like another thing, too. I don't see how he's not seen as like a somewhat underdog type character. Oh, yeah. But you know what I mean? And also, too. He actually strikes amazing deals when they go through. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, dude, when this whole the whole thing during the Battle of the Five Kings, he marries one of his daughters to the king in the north. Like, arguably one of the two people that's going to be reigning over Westeros. Like, you're going to have a king in the south, king in the north, right? right. That was Rob's goal. Uh, and then another one of his sons is squire to that king. Mm -hmm. And I think another son is going to be married to Arya, correct? Or is that a grandson? And then two of his grandsons get fostered to King's Landing, which is like, or I'm sorry, to uh, Winterfell. Which is like his fucking wet dream, because I'm pretty sure he tried to get, or no, what was that, what am I thinking of here? Somebody with, from his family was supposed to be fostered in King's yeah, Landing, yep. and it just got Warts. refused by John Aaron, right? No, no, uh, yes, there was something in, um... Yeah, John, it, yes, I, that's I'm pretty correct. sure the yeah. phrase were, like, intended to be, yeah, like, fostered in King's Landing by John Aaron. We know he's open to that kind of thing. It's not like John's like, nah, I don't really no, care for fostering. We, it's like, we know, no, it's... We know why John Aaron didn't want that, because he's so jealous of the virality of... Walder Frey, like his male slaves. Yeah, he just slays. First off, he had like eight wives. He has how many kids? And John Aaron arguably doesn't have one kid. I think Robin or you know Robert in the book. It's arguably that's Littlefinger's kid, and not even John Aaron. Right? Or, yeah, John Aaron. So like he doesn't even have one kid. So he's probably just jealous all the time. He's like, look at this guy. He's just slaying and producing like a fucking rat down there. Dude, he is. His balls got to be like bowling balls, dude. Just imagine. <laughs> They're probably so sensitive to like you touch those things. It's like a sponge that's so wet and it's like suspended. Just any little touch, it drips. You know what I mean? That's how full it is. He's a certified low dropper, no doubt. But uh, dude, yeah, I would be pissed if I were him too. Like finally striking this sweet deal uh, at the most oh. opportune moment ever. And again, he's taking a huge risk because you don't know if Rob's going to come out on top. He knows the Lannisters are against him. And I think I know a lot of people think that or they suspect that Walder like struck this little betrayal deal prior to Rob breaking the oath right but that's not true I at least I don't think that's true at all no. I think it was directly in response to Rob breaking the oath there's no way he already had this maybe he had it in a thought in his mind like if something goes wrong or I see a reason to switch sides I'll have this in my back pocket because guess what this guy cares about his family his family dude his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, they look at him like a god. He's like a god sitting up on that throne. He is. They all want his approval. How many Walders and Waldas are there? I know. Just to try to get like a little, like, I, please, granddaddy, please. I guarantee you some of them want their names changed too to be Walder. Like, Can I be Walder too? It's like, no. We have enough Walders. We're going to get confused. Please <laughs> let me be named Walder. But I, I do think he cares about his family. I do. I know he's kind of like brutal with it. Actually, real quick, one of my favorite quotes of uh, of Walder, I just, I usually don't write things down for video, but I had to write this down just so I could remember it, because it's kind of an alpha movie. He's talking to Catelyn. Don't you try and frighten me, my lady. Your husband's in some traitor cell under the Red Keep. Your father's sick, might be dying, and Jamie Lannister's got your brother in chains. What do you have that I should fear? That son of yours? I'll match you son for son, and I'll still have eighteen when all of yours are dead. Like oh, dude, yes, as a. a <laughs> Giga Chad line. But despite that, I, I say that now because I do still think he cares about his family. No, but he also has, he does, I'm sure he cares about his family to an extent, but he has transcended the need to beg for his kids' lives, unlike Catelyn, who is like, yeah. please, I'll, I'll give you the most valuable hostage in all of the, like, the War of the Five Kings by giving you Jamie back just so maybe my daughters can get back. Walder's like, yeah, go ahead, kill him. I have how many? Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. I don't have that weakness like you do. So, that, yeah, great, great Chad move by Walder Frey. The Tullys are basically telling him, like, yo, you got to open up your gates and let, you know, Rob come down here, the north. And he's like, 
Why? <laughs> I, I, I know. See, that's like, dude, are you it's serious? so base. Like, think of the balls on this guy. Also, he can, like, um, he can field more troops than Tully's, too. So, like, strength-wise, he is, like, a very powerful house. And I think they just did him dirty in Game of Thrones, the HBO series. Made him look like these like, kind of, like, ne'er-do-wells. You know, these kind of, like... <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like peasants, like if the peasants all got together and made a house, it would be the, it'd be the phrase. They got those weird, like little hats on too. Yeah, I know. They, they, they make, they them, make look them look pathetic. so lame. Yeah, it's like the, it's like the hill. Books. It's like the hill tribes, but less physically imposing, right? Like that's kind of what they're going for. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, I, yep, exactly. What you said about the Tullys, dude. That's their liege lord. Like how? That's like the Car Starks <laughs> refusing the Starks. Look what happened when that happened, dude. Rob took that right. guy's head off. Right. They, and instead, like. Walder, he just sits on his throne and laughs because he's got an <laughs> army of Walders. Like, <laughs> good luck getting to me, boy. You know, and one yeah, of but, the two. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, but like the, the Tully's getting mad at Walder at this point. It's kind of on you for like allowing this behavior, right? Like, I, I know you kind of burned him before by like uh, Holster Tully not going to Walder Frey's like all of his weddings because like, dude, I'm gonna be there most of my life. I go to every single wedding, which I I, I totally get as Lord Tully. But when you do those kind of burns to one of your like high lords. Of course, you're going to just build animosity, and, and you give them the most like iconic nickname, the late Walter Frey. Which I think, I think on this video title, we're going to call him the late great Walter Frey because he's yeah, great. absolutely. I, I, I fucking love Walter Frey. Yeah, I love Walter Frey too. He's completely misunderstood. The, the family thing is something I can't get over either because I feel like a lot of people's praise for this show uh, has to do with like the compassion some people feel about, like Jamie, for example, when the evil music plays when he walks in and all that stuff. Right, he's seen as the bad guy. But you can't deny that he cares about Tyrion. So even the most like normie of people in this community, they'll see how Jamie sees Tyrion and they'll have a little soft spot in their heart for Jamie still because we right. all like Tyrion, right? Tyrion's a good guy. So if Jamie likes him, then it's like, okay, good. He's not like Cersei. He's not totally like ridiculous. I just kind of get that same vibe from Walder, even though he says his kids are somewhat dispensable. It's like you can't blame him for that. If he has so many kids, I think he has over a hundred kids and grandkids or whatever. Do you realize that you couldn't possibly spend enough time with them to get to know them on the same level as, like, we know our parents or we know our kids right. or whatever? And we just don't. So they're going to be dispensable. It's like us talking about an acquaintance. You know what I mean? And plus, they live right. in such, like, a robotic society here where it's, like, it all depends on the heirs and the spares and everything. You kind of have to approach it. Like, yeah, there's a good chance that, like, the heir to the throne might be, like, five or six chain links down. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, my son, I, I can't get too attached because this might not even be the guy on the throne. Right. Oh, I Shit. can't also burn... I, I can't burn the guy that's um, like two or three links down as well because he might be the one on the throne or, you know, whatever. He might be actually one taking over. Yeah, dude, speaking of, by the way, these like links, these chain links or uh, chinks for short in the line of succession, <laughs> um, Black Walder, you know, the I think he's like fourth or fifth in line. He's like the great grandson of Walder Frey. He maybe you could take a look at this guy and say he's kind of a villainous Frey. He's the only uh -huh. example of a truly villainous Frank, I think, because he's really in it for himself. He's trying to get himself super close to the, the throne so that he'll inherit it from Walder. But what do yeah. you notice? Even he is not willing to go and touch our boy, the big mighty sitting on the throne, Walder Frey. Yeah, I forget who baby. says it. I forget who says it. But uh, I'm pretty sure one of his sons, maybe it's just one of his grandsons, he basically says, yeah, dude, like, we have a good thing going right now, but when Walder, when Big Daddy Walder dies, it's going to be like a free-for-all, like, Frey <laughs> fuck festival. It's going to be like a power vacuum, a power grab. Like, we don't know what we're going to do. Oh. And Walder is, like, kind of a skinny dude. He's not physically imposing at all. He never has been. He's always been kind of pathetic looking. So yeah. just the fact that he has this, like, power over people despite that. Yeah. I don't know. How is that not impressive to anybody? It yeah, it is very impressive because look at, even though we love Roos Bolton, which I think we should do a video here soon on Roos Bolton being potentially like the best northern leader we see in he, the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, even the, him, who has a huge blind spot or maybe just doesn't give a shit what uh, Ramsey will do, Ramsey immediately kills him. Like, <laughs> sorry, daddy. Sorry. Right. Um, I don't compare and, and, those but two no things. One, yeah, no one has that kind of uh, balls to Walder Frey, which you might say like, oh yeah, uh, no one has balls, or is it like a proactive thing from Walder Frey, like snipping off the balls of his sons, you know, mentally, Met metaphorically. Metaphorically, physically, literally, yeah. I think, at least in my opinion, the main purpose of this video is to say that Walder Frey did nothing wrong during the Red Wedding. The whole right. deal that he made is nothing wrong. And it's not even just the fact that he basically betrayed Rob or whatever, like broke his own oath as a response. Like people say, that's oh, disproportionate. No, it's the argument that people have when they say that Rob and the Stark army had guessed right. 
at their at, at, <sighs> at the yeah. twins. This idea for anybody that doesn't know that for some reason in Westeros, if you are a guest in the house of a lord and you're like accepted, this is like a, an agreed upon thing. They're basically invincible in your house. They can do anything right. you want. They can take a shit well, on your face. There's nothing you can do. There's one more like requirement, right? You, you, you come in as a guest, and as long as you're served food, if they give you food yeah, and you right, need right. it, yep, then it's it's uh, you're invincible. Your cheat codes on. Like, yeah, you can't do anything to me. I can take a shit anywhere. And what are you gonna do? Like, you can't kill me. I would love to know the origin. I know this is an actual historical thing um, in real life. They might be like a Slavic thing. I'm not sure where it actually developed. Yeah. But in the lore of A Song of Ice and Fire, I don't know, I just have this like dumb skit in my head of like actually how it started. And it was like this lowborn guy's house and his high lord or just like kind of a witty guy goes over there, starts like is welcomed in as a guest, eats a little bit of his food. And he's about to kill him. He's like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't kill me. He's like, oh, why not? Oh, I can't. I'll kill you. He's like, well, because I ate some uh, bread. And, you know, the gods don't like people breaking guest right and he's like well it's guest right you know it's like that's not where I feel it's <laughs> so right, dumb he's right that's- my lord <laughs> you can't kill him now <laughs> oh, okay it's- I guess I understand oh well did, did you have to wait well what happens if I do and he's like well there was a guy who got turned into a rat <laughs> because he did this and oh, I was like no. oh come on they spread the word <laughs> uh, but I mean like also the whole story of the rat cook right who like he is a He's a cook at the Night's Watch at, I think, the Night Tower, Night Fort. I'm trying to remember which one it's called. Um, But he basically serves this king, his son, makes him basically cannibal. And for some reason, the old gods didn't think um, serving this man's son to himself is that big of a deal. But breaking guest right was the thing that got him cursed. Like, I I don't understand. (laughs) My brain is kind of like, so the cannibalism is not a big deal. But also, like, just pretend this actually happened. Like, the rat cook actually occurred, right? Yeah, yeah. How would anybody know unless the gods explicitly said, listen, this is for <laughs> the guest right, not for the cannibalism thing that you made this king eat his own son. Which not gods that. are these even that, that have this? Oh, probably old god, because old Nan was saying it, which, dude, old yeah, Nan, yeah, don't right. get me started. It's it's a lot to me like the right of the first night, you know, basically Priminocta in Westeros. It was yeah. under yeah, under King Jaehaerys way back in the day. I think his wife, what was her name? Alisane? Is that is it Jaehaerys yeah. and Alisane, I think? Okay, yeah, Alisane's like, Jaehaerys, listen, man, we got a problem here. I don't like this thing going on. And this is like a tried and true old thing in Westeros. A lot of lords even like it because they like the idea that their wives are getting pregnant with uh, with like high, the king's baby or whatever. You know, or the yeah, lord yeah. of the area's baby. It's like, dude, that's like a see, super beta. Like, that's cuck supreme, man. But right. yeah, that was the thing. And Alisane basically convinced Jaehaerys to exit. And a lot of people were pissed off. But it, it was an archaic thing. It's like it's totally useless in the modern day. It's like, yeah, there's going to be somebody that has to take the brunt of it. And it's like Jaehaerys was the king, and he was overall loved. You know, in the end, at least, he was loved. So it worked out well for him. I understand that Walder Frey is not a loved guy, and he's kind of seen as scummy for, again, some unknown reason. But somebody had to do it. Somebody had to be the guy to put his foot down and say... No, this is completely ridiculous. Like, I've been shafted right. my whole life. I'm not about to get shafted again by this little, like, nobody from the north who thinks he's going to be king. Like, no way. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to put my foot down in my own house. These people do not have squatter's rights in my house while I live here. It's total BS. Oh, he's he's basically the martyr, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely the squatter's rights. <laughs> it's true. It's the bread. squatter's rights. Yeah. When does it go up? That's another thing, too. It's like, yeah, I broke bread and you've had, like, salt or whatever drink here. So what, are you invincible until, what, I die here? How does this work? Same kind of thing as, like, in John Wick, right, in the Continental. It's like, they're not allowed to do business on the Continental grounds. It's like, dude, if there were two people that really wanted to kill each other, and they never go into it in the movies. They always make it more dramatic. But it's like, if there were two people that were really at each other's throats, you know how annoying that would be, actually? You're just both sitting there stressed out. Like, if I exit this place, he's going to come out right behind me and kill me. I have to stay in here as long as possible. That's kind of how I feel like it would be in Guest Right, too. Except it's even worse. Because one of yeah. those people lives there, and he's like, God, I wish this guy would fucking leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, what, did you just, like, follow him around with a knife poked at his back and be like, as soon as you leave, guess who's going to die? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, what can you do, though? Because it's like, unless the guest I, person is, like, super pathetic, uh, they have to see it coming. I guess. See, there is an argument to say that Walder maybe could have waited until Rob was outside the walls or outside of the house, maybe the next day. Because, like you say, you don't know when it expires. Maybe, like... 
it expires the next day after the meal. Right. I don't know. So maybe you could make that argument. But again, it really just shouldn't matter. That's my argument. That's your yeah. argument, too, I well, think. It just shouldn't well, matter. This is hypothetical, right? So Red Wedding happens. You know, we get uh, Ed Mir up there with his daughter now. And yeah. then the Starks are about to leave, but they don't know. They actually have, like, a huge encampment around them. They uh, trigger the surprise as soon as they leave, and they're about to leave. The encampments, they start them all on fire. Uh, Rob just crosses the threshold to now leave, and then he just gets killed. Like, does that make it any better in your mind? Like, people that are mad about this, like, hey, you betrayed him. It's like, well, it's not guest right, so is it okay now? <laughs> Dude, is that ask why you're fucking, mad? Ask fucking Ned Stark, is it is it better to stab the Mad King in the back or the belly, right? Same kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous, yeah. like, honor-bound, like, t- well, rules but, of killing in Westeros. But also, Walter did us a favor, right? Would you want Rob the simp in any sort of leadership role? And then also seeing no. how easy for how easy it was for his mom to like sow discord between all of the like high ranking lords in the area because she's like I'm gonna give away our um uh, our the most valued hostage and also get mad at Card Stark for wanting revenge because his sons are dying literally his sons are dying and 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 Catelyn just can't cope with the fact that her daughters might be dead she she has confirmed her son and her number one priority should be to keep her son safe but instead she's like you know. Going for it all. Hail Mary pass. Let Jamie go. Oops. Huge backfired. Now everybody's dead. Dude, we got to make this Karen of the North video for Catelyn. Cause she is yeah, we're the, going to. She, she is. is the worst. She's the worst. The, yeah. the, the one thing that she did right was to tell Rob not to break the vow to Walder Frey because it's true. See, this is... I almost have a different stance on it now that we like talk about this so much. Is like... I used to think of it purely as like a stupidity thing on Rob because it's like, yeah, what did you expect? But... When you put yourself in the mind of Walder, just like, you know how defeated you'd feel? It's like, oh, I'm 90 years old. I, all of like my grinding is finally going to pay off. and I'm finally going to get my family like into, uh, pro- yeah. into prominence. And then that was like stripped from him. And, you know, he kind of came out pretty well, too, because I think, God, what did he end up with? I think one of his daughters is going to marry a Lannister. And then obviously he has Edmir Tully. And then also Roos Bolton, you know, got thickums or whatever for the, which is, by the way, we talk about loving Roose Bolton oh, as well. Dude, that, yes. Great move. A- amazing move. Like strategy. Everybody wins. Everybody wins yeah. in that deal. Yeah, dude, exactly. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Like, after all this time, he's going to be shafted again. It's like, how do you not feel bad for him? Imagine that perspective. Not just the Rob being stupid, but, like, this old, defeated man just got kicked when yes. he's down for, like, the thousandth time. So one thing I wanted to bring up, too, was that, you know, when we see Roose Bolton in the War of the Five Kings, he's not putting his guys up in the vanguard. He's putting Rob Stark loyalists up there. So th- you could say that, though it's not explicitly stated, Roose Bolton is purposely killing Starks. But Walter Frey is putting so many of his men for the Stark cause. Like, he's not being like a little uh, stinker bingus, you know, like, oh, I'll just give you a little bit now, and maybe you'll come back later, and I'll refill up the garrison for you. It's like, no, he's putting a lot of his men out there on both sides whenever he's fully committed to the cause. And, like, he makes up a ton of their manpower, the Freys. You know, maybe not the majority, but definitely a sizable force. So for him to be like, yeah, I've lost so much in the War of the Five Kings— and just as we're kind of like, you know, we're kind of at a standstill here a little bit now that Rob Stark kind of got pushed back. And it, well, actually, because it looked like the Lannisters might have lost King's Landing, but, you know, ended up getting the Tyrells, which, OK. Yeah. Real quick side note. The Tyrells say like, ooh, the little bit of turning of the tide here. Which way should I jump? Ooh, should I jump to um, yeah, there? I know. The, the Starks. They're, they're slimy, and, and they, dude. Yeah, and then they go to the Lannisters. It's it's just like that HR meme, right? Where it's like, oh, you look beautiful today. Oh, thank you. And then it's like, hi, exactly. I think you look nice. Security, HR, please. I think I could Walter, make you my ninth wife. <laughs> Walter can't do anything right. And he is actually committing to the cause. I, uh, he is. Poor He's Walter. committed to the and, cause. I know. Don't you? This, this, dude, there's no reason not to feel bad for this guy. And Yeah, and like you, like you said earlier, your main point is before I started talking about how bad I feel for Walter for giving up so much. But finally, his ship comes in, you know? Like, I'm finally going to, all this is going to pay off. And then he gets just screwed because, because why? It's not like he had a greater opportunity. Like, I mean, he would be still bitter, but at least game would respect game if Rob Stark married Marjorie Tyrell. He's like, dude, listen, I either get your, uh, which not not a bad-looking daughter. I was about to say a nasty-looking lady, but she's not a bad-looking girl at all, the, the Frey. No, she was, well, that was like, a, that was like that's a, at least in the show, yeah, that was like right. the thing, right? Like, oh, dude, I thought it was going to be some nasty like Do you think, well, archetype of a Frey, but no. 
do you think Walter Frey would be, I mean, he would be mad, but wouldn't he kind of like a little bit respected too? Like, listen, you got the Tyrells on your side. All you had to do is marry her. Yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. Like, <laughs> like Walter would have to understand that. Like, right. oh yeah, I understand why you broke the pack because you have a whole, you have the reach or just my bridge. Which one do you pick? It's like, of course I'm gonna pick the reach. But I mean, that's not what happened. He picked Jane Westerling, who is a vassal lord of the Lannister. So it just makes no sense. Oh, Rob. Ugh. I'm mad yeah, I know. For I know. So you still, you know, I want this thing too. Part, so part of the deal originally that uh, Walder negotiated with Catelyn was one of his either sons or grandsons—I don't remember—to marry Arya. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was did Catelyn know at this point that the Lannisters no longer had Arya, or was she still like under the deception of? of no. Well, uh, at Cersei? that point, well, at that point, she th- she thinks they have um, they have the uh, they have Arya. Yeah. At that point, right? Are you sure about that? Well, when she makes the deal. Yeah, I believe so because they have. Okay. They, she okay. still thinks because they they at least in the books. I'm trying to remember in the show because they always bluff that they have Arya. They send up Jane. Is it Jane Poole? Uh, the girl that ends up. She's like, oh yeah, I'm Arya Stark, and she's the one that actually gets uh, graped by oh, Oose, yeah, or Ramsay yeah, Bolton yeah, you're in, right, the, you're in the books. Right, you're right. So yep, they they, they always yeah. claim that she has it. You know what I want to do? Like, listen, shout out to Fandome. They do a bunch Fandome. of like, hey, how like how Rob Stark could have you know won the War of the Five Kings. I want them to do so. Fill up their comments with this. Demand that they do this because I love their their how the Greyjoys could have won the uh, war for the Iron Throne. I want them to do how Walder Frey could have sat the Iron Throne because there is definitely a path. There's to a victory. way it could happen. Yeah, dude, and I, uh, I want to see that. We're, we're not going to make that video, so somebody's <laughs> got to. Fandom, dude, it's in your hands, or dudes, get it done. The path is clear. It's just up to you to pave it. Yeah, I mean, oh, could, could you imagine? So if Rob stays with her, he does. He doesn't get betrayed there. There's still a lot more war to go now that the the Lannisters and Tyrells are now on each other's side. He really needs to get the Aarons on his side. If he got the Aarons and the Freys... Who's that, Rob, you're saying? Yeah, if Rob has the Freys still on his side, he doesn't get betrayed. Mm-hmm. He gets the Aarons to join him because Lysa is like dragging her nasty-ass tits on the ground trying to pick a side here because she's so simping hard for... Yeah, she's just wearing tassels on her nipples, but it's actually <laughs> just the tits themselves moving around like that. Well, how can't they be like that? Because Robin's constantly sucking on them nonstop. They have to be... I know, dude, he's got a Hoover mouth, too. To go, yeah. <laughs> like, he's doing that, like, total vacuum. But that's because Lysa doesn't really produce that much milk, you know what I mean? But the suction, yeah. if there's enough suction, it makes up for the lack yeah. of supply. It's it's simple physics. I'm going to add that to the wiki after we get off here. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, like, imagine if somehow the Stannis' soldiers... Plus, because Stannis' soldiers kind of got beaten a little bit, but they're still strong. Stannis' soldiers, plus... The Aarons, plus Rob's now uh, combined forces with the phrase because it never went away, they would still have a fighting chance. I still would say that they probably could be victorious. they just head down south and take out parts of the Reach. You know, start burning up crops down there. Fuck if they don't care about what happens to the Reach. The narrative of the series in general was to say that Rob was like this, uh, you know, unprecedented, like, prodigy when it came to, like, military strategy and stuff like that. So even if he didn't have the numbers, he still, like, was able to win all these battles against, like, this, like, battle-hardened and, like, superior in every way Tywin. Right. And I think the, I think the whole reason the, the Red Wedding was supposed to hit hard, aside from it's the fact that it's, like, a supposedly beloved character, right, Simp Supreme, I think uh, I think it was supposed to tell us, like, oh, man, like, if this didn't happen, they would have won. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that was right. definitely the goal of that. So, yeah, dude, for sure. Are you kidding me? With the phrase, the errands, I'm not even sure you need the errands. The phrase alone could have secured that victory, and I'm not even joking. What does Rob do? You know, I'm the king in the north. I don't oh. need a Lannister to sit in the south. If only I had a beautiful old man that could take this role for me it's walder uh, baby he's the only uh, oh, pick like a different kind of scenario could have occurred where he rob just says hey i want my independence i'm just heading back up north and uh let the riverlands be the front lines that'd be great you know for him because that's all he really wants is independence but he doesn't want justice but yeah doing it that strategy though would leave you a little bit vulnerable to the uh gray joys who are kind of wreaking havoc in the north as of right now in the books you know, red Christ. wedding I hate the Greyjoys. Someone yeah, I commented. Know, but, someone right. commented. They're like, "Please, can you do a tier list of uh, the Greyjoys?" I saw like, the house Greyjoys. Greyjoys, my favorite house. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> you are not going to like this channel. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't. Well, this, there are some cool aspects of it. Like, I would love to see in like, dude, Winds of Winter. I can't wait. Oh, it depends on how George wants to write it. Uh, you know, I'm on a first name basis. George R. R. Martin. That's why I say George. But it depends on G, how he man. wants to write it. Yeah, exactly. G. 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 Uh, <laughs> I still love that idea of calling people by their first initial. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, G, how's it going? But it doesn't sound good with G because it sounds like I'm saying gangster. But like, like yeah. hey, D for Don. Hey, D. Yeah. I don't know. D. It's just it's just so endearing. Anyway, 
I do want to see something like Euron totally fuck up Daenerys, right? Or if Victarion, <laughs> if Victarion yeah. ends up uh, going over there and successfully marrying Daenerys somehow, like if that if that happens, oh, hell yeah. and then you get Euron like fighting up and fighting it out and if his dragon horn actually works and he like takes one of Daenerys' dragon or two of them or whatever, that would be sweet. But that's not to say I'm in Team Greyjoy overall. Like, absolutely fucking not. They're disgusting. Like, Walder Frey and Craster, especially Walder, those are the type of guys that we're like, you know, I think there's more. There's like more beneath the surface to love about these guys. It's a little yeah. deeper than what we think. But with the Greyjoys, they're just fucking gross. They're just swamp no. ass. The whole place is swamp ass. It's gray all the time. Their boots are soaking wet. It's disgusting. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I hate the Greyjoys. But what I will say is we're going to try to do a uh, Simp Supreme uh, a rankings, who's the the biggest simp in all of uh, Westeros, and maybe just go by era, you know, within uh, Game of Thrones because, you know, Rob's up there. We got a couple more. You mentioned somebody in this video. I totally forgot who, but I was going to write it down. Like another simp. But, another simp? And I mentioned him? Yeah, maybe. It, it, just, really? it popped in my head when we were talking. But anyways, one last thing I want to say. Is it not worse for, like, I, I well, maybe it's not worse, but Arya to do this whole, like, cannibalism thing for, and I, I, it's going to be way more of, like, a, a Lord Manderly thing in the books, right? Putting up fray pies, right? But yeah. isn't that kind of, like, worse than the Red Wedding? Like, wouldn't you just rather kill me than, like, force me to eat my own, like, family and then maybe kill me? Just kill me. Like this is worse. Oh, this is yeah. like over the top. Just kill me. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't ruin guest right. I just killed somebody else and I'm feeding you to him. I, I, I don't please, know. Please, you can kill me, but please don't feed me to my father. It's like, I'm <laughs> sorry, can't do that for you. Like, are you serious? That you, you can't accommodate that one request. It's like, you know, Ned Stark, for example, he died unjustly. He just, he did. He was stupid. A lot of decisions he made probably could have been changed to save his life, right? But he yeah. is the stupid, like, uh, naive naively honorable guy in the first book and he died because of it but rob is not that way like Arya, i don't know if she doesn't know the full story or what but you can't possibly look at that situation and think of it in the same way you think of your dad's death right being like i need to avenge my dad like this is insane like he did not deserve to die this way but you look at something like rob and it's like the only justification you could possibly have is like this cop out like oh well dude they violated guest right. Like, are you kidding me? I have to take revenge in the worst way I can. It's like, no, yeah. that's total bullshit. What's the, yeah, nonsense. If, like, if Walder Frey, if Walder Frey, never mind, I won't even say that. What? What were we going to say? Just curious. Just no, I was I was going to say, because I mean, I don't, it doesn't extend to murder, right? Because I was going to say, if Walder Frey had offered Arya a little meat pie first or whatever, and then she accepted the meat pie, would that make her killing of Walder like a little bit less bad? Like, well, yeah. How do you think they look at that in Westeros? Like, oh man, this person like assassinated the Lord. It's like, yeah, but they had guest rights, so I don't know. Maybe it, it's not so bad, right? Like, they shouldn't get the. Maybe they just get sent to the wall. Mm -hmm. No. Well, uh, so, so does that not work in reverse? Like, if I'm at your house, I give you something to eat, even if it's your own like children. If you eat it, that's not guest right for you. Like, I, I am. Am I still allowed to kill you, even though you broke bread with me? You know what I'm saying? Like reverse guest right? Does that it's, not it's, work? It's, it's, I don't know if that's reverse guest rights. It's just it's like reverse racism, right? It's all just guest right. I don't know what makes the guest right. Is Host it, right or something. Is it the you know, house? Like, is it the person you're at the house of? Or is it who gives who the food? That's the question. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious because then wouldn't Arya uh, break that? And I guess in like Walder and, you know, the books, it's completely different. But at least there, it's like Arya gave you food at your house and then kills you. But if she was to eat some of your food first, you couldn't kill her. But she can still kill you. I'm see. This is why it's so dumb. I hate it. I wanna. Uh, I just wanna kiss him. That's all. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>